Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher. Welcome to 30 Minutes of Zen, where I guide you through creating a beautiful tile using the Zen Tangle method of drawing. Today I'm using a three and a half inch by three and a half inch Zen Tangle tile, a Micron PN or plastic nib pen, a graphite pencil for shading, and a tortillon for blending. Please feel free to use anything that you have on hand. All right, I'm going to start with my pencil and I'm going to put a dot in each of the four corners. And then I'm going to connect them with a light pencil line. This is one of the first things I loved about Zentangle is this method of making a little frame for your work. Okay. Now for this one, we're going to be drawing a dragonfly and then filling it in with tangles. So to draw my dragonfly, I'm first going to make a line connecting that corner down to this corner very lightly just to keep my dragonfly straight and kind of symmetrical. And I'm going to start by putting uh, maybe a dime size shape. I'm going to put a round circle right there for the head. And then to draw the body it's called the thorax. I'm going to just bump out a little bit on each side. And then for my, I call it the tail, but it's called the abdomen. I'm going to come down pretty straight and long and curve it. And I want to make my thorax here a little bit wider. And then we need our four wings. So I'm going to start below the head a little ways. And I'm going to put a long, delicate wing this way. And I go right over my border and a long, delicate wing this way. And another one here. And another one here. And it's okay if they cross over each other or go behind each other. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I'm gonna pick up my pen. Double check, make sure you're happy with how your wings look the size of the dragonfly. Now when I do this, I'm not going to ink in the bottom of the head right here. So I'm actually going to start on the outside of that. Make my head. Come down on both sides. And then curve down into the abdomen or tail. Make these nice long wings. Now if my pencil line crossed over, I'm not going to ink that part. I'm just going to imagine it coming out the other side. All right. Now I like to sometimes add an aura around things. So for these wings, just because they're so delicate and pretty, I'm going to add this really thin outline. I 
just think that gives it a little extra something. Keeping that really thin. Now, if you'd like to do the rest of the body, you can. I'm just going to do the wings for now. And I'm going to add two oval eyes, one on each side of his head, and not huge. So, like that. And I'm just going to color mine in black. I did read that dragonflies have compound eyes and have up to 30,000 lenses in each eye. That's pretty cool. All right, the first tango we're going to do is printomp. So for printomp, it's a spiral pattern. And I just start by putting a little dot. And then out from that dot, I just start Drawing a spiral and stopping. I'm going to put another one near it. I'm going to do the same thing. And I like when these touch each other. So this one's going to touch this one, kind of go behind, which means I'm going to jump my pen, come out the other side, and imagine it going back here and coming back. It looks like one is overlapping the other. The other thing about printomp is forcing yourself to make different sized spirals. So you can do some little ones, some large ones. So right here I've got a big empty space, so I can put another one, or I can take this one here and just add another line or in that one. I just love how well Printomp fills up a space. You don't have to put yours exactly where mine are. All right, if you have any extra spaces, just aura a line so it looks like one of the spirals continued. All right, to do the um, abdomen or tail, I'm going to do Shattuck. I will write these all at the end so you can see the names of all of these. So Shattuck is, um, it can be straight lines, but I'm going to make mine a little bit curvy, almost like a rainbow. So I'm going to start kind of in the corner of that tail. And I'm going to put like three little lines. And then I'm going to put a little curve here. almost like alternating rainbows. So I'm going to start on this left side now. And then the right side. Any line you work, any line work you do on here is going to look great. So don't have to overthink it. Here's that. Okay. So moving along to the wings, um, a beautiful tango is called Zenith, and it always reminds me of lace. So I wanted to put that on these wings because dragonfly's wings are so delicate looking. So for Zenith, um, we make little bumps, and I'm going to start in the middle of this side and end at the middle of this side. So I'm going to make bumps that look like that. And 
And then we start underneath the highest point of the bump and we do the reverse. So I'm going to go from underneath this bump to underneath this bump. So like that. And right here, I'm going to act like it goes under and then comes out the other side. I'm going to repeat it on this side right now, just because that muscle memory of about like the size that I made those, I kind of want to repeat that. So I start in the middle of these wings and I bump. And I start at the high point underneath. And go that way. And from this point, there's so many variations to Zenith. Um, you can aura this, you can add little shapes, you can add circles, triangles, dots, whatever you want to do. So... I'm going to, hmm, I'm just going to put little triangles, I think that's the actual zenith pattern, just putting those little triangles on top of those dips. So right here I'm going to imagine the start of a triangle going back there, maybe even over here. Triangle. And don't worry if you have a lot more space on your wing or a lot less space than I do. It does not have to look like mine. We're just filling these in. Okay, underneath, I'm going to make a teardrop shape. So in each of those, a little teardrop. And then I'm going to go from the bottom of these curves and I'm going to put a little arch around that teardrop. I'm running out of room to put those arches, so I'm just imagining where they're going to be. And then I'm going to aura over the top of these triangles. So I have the little bit of an arch over the triangle. Feel free to do whatever you want on this part. Just filling space. And then I'm going to aura again, just because I have the room. Now underneath these little areas that are left, maybe I'll put a little aura triangle in there just to fill in space. And in each of these triangles that I've made up here, I'm going to put a smaller triangle and I'm going to color it in. It kind of ends up being a little diamond. Just to add some of that black like we have in the eyes up above.
And then underneath these little teardrops, I'm gonna put some little rays. Again, you do not have to do this. I just like filling those in a little bit. All right, I'm gonna stop right there for right now. And then these bottom wings, I discovered a beautiful tangle, and I'm probably not gonna pronounce it correctly, but I believe it's Pashalov, and it's by Amy Brody, a certified Zen Tangle teacher, a CZT. And this one is beautiful. So it's a series of spirals. Again, that's kind of our theme here. And so I'm going to start right here in this bottom left corner of this wing. And I'm going to bump up and out, and then I'm gonna come all the way down and touch that bottom of the wing and make a spiral. And on the inside of that spiral, I'm gonna put a little black dot. And I'm gonna do the same thing this way. So I wanna to touch the top and then touch the bottom and make that spiral with a dot. And now we come from this bottom part and I'm gonna make my spiral go the opposite way. So I'm gonna come up here, touch the other side, touch the bottom and make that. And now I'm going to start over on the top of this side. We're just alternating those spirals. Feel free to play with this a little bit on a practice paper. On this side, I'm going to start on this end with that spiral. I'm just basically alternating these. So this one ended on this side. So I want to start on this side and end over here. And I've got room to stick in one more. So pretty. Okay. If you have some spaces that you feel like are too wide open, you can always put like a little triangle there to fill those in. These tangles are meant to be a starting point and then you add what you want to make them yours. Okay, that's pretty much it for the decorations on the dragonfly. We've got some more work to do on the border. And then for dragonflies, I always make a big, beautiful antenna on mine, but it turns out dragonflies have very small antenna. So you decide how big or small you want to make yours. But I'm just going to come up like that and give it a couple little antenna. And then I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw over that first border that I made. And just picking up my pen wherever a wing crosses over it. And for this one, I thought it would be fun to make a double border. So I'm going to 
add a second one. Pick up my pen when I get to a wing or an antenna. I like the look of the second line on there. And then since we have so much white space on our tile, I thought it would be fun to add some flux. So flux is a shape that's like a teardrop. So I'm just going to put a little teardrop in right there. And I'm going to add a larger one. And then maybe a small one. We'll do a couple this way also. And I can put the same amount, but maybe I add a little one coming up over there. Looks a little more organic if it's not exactly symmetrical. And if you have room up here by the head and you want to add a couple, you could. Maybe I'll put a small one or two in there. And then inside flux, we typically do a little curved line and then a dot or two. You could do a dot with a solid, I mean a line with a solid dot on top. You could do it more like a leaf. Whatever you like. There just because I've got a lot of space. Okay. Now along with flux, um, a lot of people, including myself, like to add some tipple. And tipple is just circles. So I'm going to put one right here. And then I'm going to ink in that space between the tipple and the flux. one over here and maybe a little tiny one next to it and ink in that space in between. Could even nestle one up in there. Put one over here and ink that in. They're just circles of varying sizes. And it adds so much. Put a couple on the top. You might have more or less space than me, so fill it how you wish. Okay, another thing I love to add is mucha. And if you're not comfortable making mucha right now, um, you don't have to add this, or you can practice on another piece of paper. But mucha is this shape that comes up, makes a curve, and then bumps back inside itself and comes down. So it makes this curve and it kind of goes up and comes back down. I'm just going to add a couple of those.
I'm throwing a lot of tangles at you. All right, and the last one I'm going to add is called fescue, and I tend to put this on a lot of my more organic type tiles. And fescue is simply a curve. This one I'm going to go off my border. And then it's got a dark little teardrop shape at the end. And these are fun to fill in some space and add a little bit of a, a flare. And they can go right over other things or curve in behind them. Just a curve and a teardrop. And if you'd like to add a couple little dots, I mean, up and over things, you can. Again, this is your piece, do what you want. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pick up my pencil and do some quick shading. I've only got a few minutes left. So to shade these wings, I'm going to put some graphite along the inside. That wing and the inside of this wing. And I'm going to go to the other side and do that same thing. Even a number two pencil will work fine for this. But adding this little bit of shading just gives the whole piece a finished look. It makes it look a little more three-dimensional. I'm going to go along the inside of the head and the body or thorax. And down that abdomen. Typically I would turn my tile and be really careful about where I put this graphite, but Okay, and then inside these flex shapes, I like to put just a little bit in that bottom, tuck it into the bottom of each of those fluxes. And we're going to blend all of this in just a minute. So pretty. And then on the border, I'm going to put a little bit on the outside, not a lot, but just a little. And then I'm going to pick up my tortillon or blending tool. And I'm going to soften each of these. And push them towards that center. Look at how pretty that looks. Softening it, pushing or pulling it towards that center, but leaving the very center white. hurrying now to get done in the 30 minutes. I apologize. Even inside that tail, try to leave it nice and light in the center. And on the flux, I'm just pushing it up. Not filling the whole flux, but just giving it a little bit of shadow in there. And on the outside,
can really mat out. You want it to be darkest closest to the line and then get lighter as it goes out. All right, that was kind of a fast ending. There we go, there's our little dragonfly. Don't forget to initial your work. And then on the back, sign it. I love doing a little journal entry about what's going on in my heart, what I'm thinking about this week, date it. And then um, here is a list of the tangles that we used today. And this one is by Amy Brody. The rest of them are all um, Zentangle tangles. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we'll see you next time.